Hi everyone and welcome. In this video, we are going to review the configuration of our traffic injection virtual machines. For this, we're going to look at configuring hostname, IP, DNS server, and web server. We're going to start by logging into a virtual machine using Secure Shell. and we are ready to get started. There are scripts provided to make these configuration changes so that you don't have to be worried about knowing a lot about Linux and also not have to worry about configuring the machine in a way that it's going to not be usable, especially for things like IP. Let's look at changing the host name first. All you have to do is use a script called change host name. And then you put the host name that you want to be applied. I'm just going to use my initials for this. And that's all there is to that. If you want to see the changed host name in the prompt, then you need to log out and log back in again. So let's do that. And we can now see in the prompt that the host name is what I have changed the host name to. Next thing I want to take a look at is configuring IP. Let's look at current state. We can see that there are two network adapters, ENS192 and ENS224. ENS192 you do not ever want to change because that is the interface that you are now connected into a secure shell. And if you change that, you will be locked out of the VM, which is not something we want to do. Uh, ENS224 is the adapter that's actually connected into the network equipment. That's the one that we're going to want to change. Again, we have a very simple script for this. Change IP. I need to put in the IP address in CIDR notation. Note that this has to be class B. We'll use 172.16.10.20. Just use slash 24. And optionally, if I want to, I can put uh, a DNS server address on this. I don't have to do that. And if you don't, it's going to look to itself to resolve DNS. I'm going to leave DNS blank because I want it to do that at this point in time. Press enter. And that's all we need to do for that. Now, what will end up happening, um, I'll show you now what IP looks like afterwards. We can now see that there is an IPv4 address on ENS224. That is the IP address that we entered. The other thing that's happened is a default route has been added that will send all traffic to class B private through that ENS224 adapter to the first IP address on the network for the IP address that you specified. So let's take a look at that as well. If we look at the routing table, you can see by that second last entry that 172.16/12 is going to 172.16.10.1 and 172.16.10.1 is the first IP address on the network for the IP address I entered for ENS224. That's fairly straightforward. That's all we need to do to configure IP. I would highly recommend you do not manually configure IP. Again, if you mess up and you change accidentally the IP address on ENS192, you are no longer going to have access to the VM and you're going to have to talk to your proper support to get that changed. Next thing we want to look at is changing DNS server. So the DNS server that is on the system will resolve either internet.local or intranet.local domains. Uh, your choice for that one. And you will find that there'll be labs you'll need to do one or the other. The way that we go from one to the other is, again, we have a script. And this is going to be change DNS. The first argument is going to be either internet.local or intranet.local, whichever you need to configure. I'm going to do internet.local. And that's the only argument that you have to specify. If you need to set up a forwarder, then the second argument is going to be the IP address of the DNS server you're going to forward to. 
If you don't need to set that up, then don't bother putting the information in. I'm just going to hit enter. It'll take a second to restart the DNS service. What will end up happening is four records are going to be created that can be resolved, triple W, NS1, and mail. Plus, there's going to be an MX record set up. You can resolve any of those, and they are all going to point to the IP address that's on ENS224. Okay, that's finished. If we do a quick check on this, And let's look up www.internet.local. And we can see that will return the IP address that is assigned to ENS224 that we configured earlier. Note that changing DNS is always going to pick up the current address of ENS224. If you find that you've changed the IP address on ENS224 interface, you will have to rerun the change DNS command in order to get that IP to update. Last thing we're going to look at is changing the web server. Web server, like DNS, can be configured to display a website for either internet or intranet. Changing that, as you can imagine, is going to be just as easy as the others. There's a script for this. Change web. The argument that you provide is either internet or intranet. I'll set this one up to internet so it matches DNS. That's all there is to that. If we want to test this out, the links uh, text browser is installed. And all we have to do is point to our server. You can use either IP or uh, name, providing that you have DNS configured correctly. And you'll notice that this is a highly sophisticated web page. It will show that we're on internet.local. The intranet web page looks basically the same as this, except for the fact that it displays intranet.local. And that is a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. And we'll see you next time.